Last year, I reviewed the Minus Forum UN1290, surprisingly powerful mini PC with a top tier i9 12900HK processor, all at a mid range price. Even now, you can still snag one for under $500. But recently, Minus Forum sent me this the NAB9 Pro, another mini PC rocking the same still capable 12900HK chip and the same sub $500 price tag. So now I'm wondering why do both of these even exist? Did Minisform find a way to squeeze more performance out of the 12900HK? Is this new model more efficient? And they just dropped the old system into a fresh convertible chassis or is there maybe one feature that makes the NAB9 a completely different PC? Let's dig in and find out. It's the money. Let's take a look at what the NAB9 Pro is packing under the hood, literally. To access the internals, Minisform included a spring-loaded toolless top panel, which is a nice touch for quick upgrades or maintenance. At the heart of this mini PC is the Intel Core i9-12900HK, a 14-core 20-thread mobile CPU from Intel's Alder Lake lineup with a max turbo boost of 5 GHz. It's the same chip used in last year's UN1290, and while it's no longer bleeding edge, it's still a powerhouse in a compact desktop. For graphics, you're looking at Intel's integrated Iris Xe GPU with 96 execution units clocked at 1.5 GHz. The system supports dual-channel DDR4 memory via two SODIMM slots, and my unit came with 32GB of DDR4-3200 RAM pre-installed. Storage is handled by a 1TB M.2 PCIe Gen 4 SSD under an actively cooled heatsink with room for expansion via a 2.5-inch SATA bay, perfect for adding media storage or backups. Wireless connectivity is provided by a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 module. The NAB9 Pro is also pretty well equipped when it comes to I.O. On the front, you've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, a 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack, the power button, and a dedicated clear CMOS button. Around the back, there are two USB 2.0 ports, HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 1.4, dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet jacks, and a full feature USB 4 port that supports display port, 40 gigabit per second data transfer, and up to 100 watt power delivery input. And finally, something the UN1290 doesn't have, a PCIe 4x4 Oculink port. Power comes from a 19 volt DC barrel jack and Minus Form includes everything you need in the box, the power supply, HDMI cable, SATA cable, and a quick start guide. So overall, the NAB9 Pro checks all the right boxes for a powerful, flexible, and compact desktop system. But since it's built around the same CPU as the UN1290, what really matters is how the two compare in performance, thermals, and design, and those two key upgrades, USB 4 and Oculink, offer a serious boost in expandability. We're definitely going to take a closer look at that. Let's run through the performance. Starting with Cinebench 2024 and the multi-core test, the NAB9 Pro scored 787, about 4% lower than the UN1290's 820, not a huge drop, but likely due to tighter power limits and more conservative thermals. It also comes in roughly 10% behind the Geekom A8 and 16% below the Ace Magic W1. Of course, both of those are running higher core count Ryzen chips. The B-Link Sear 9 still leads the pack here at 1187. Of course, that machine cost almost twice as much. Single core Cinebench is one of the areas where the NAB9 nudges ahead of its predecessor for a tiny 0.9% gain. It also outperforms the A8 and W1, both of which scored 104 and stays competitive with newer chips in the GT1 and Sear 9. Not surprisingly, the M4 Mac Mini runs away with this one, scoring 173. In Geekbench 6 Multicore, the NAB9 posted 11,131, a 3.5% improvement over the UN1290. It does trail the A8 and W1 by about 16 to 17%, but those Ryzen CPUs are packing more performance cores. Considering the NAB9 is built on an older Intel and just six performance core 
that's still a solid showing. Geekbench single core tells a slightly different story. The NAB9 landed at 2617, about 2.9% 2 below the UN1290 2695. It does manage to edge out the A1 and W1 here. Most AX86 systems in this group are fairly close in single core with only the M4 standing out. GPU performance is where things start to fall behind. The NAB9's Iris XE graphics scored 15293, a 3.2% drop from the UN1290, and significantly lower than the A8 and W1, both of which break 30,000 thanks to our DNA2 integrated graphics. And this is where the Iris XE starts to feel a little outdated. Photoshop performance, though, is a win. The NAB9 scored 7034, which is a 15.6% boost over the UN1290 6083, and it actually beats the pricier MSI DP21 14th gen mini desktop PC, which is a nice surprise at this price point. In Premiere Pro, the NAB9 hit 2337, which is about a 3.1% improvement over the UN1290. That still trails behind the A8 and W1, Blender CPU test gave the NAB9 a score of 61.3, just behind the UN1290 and below the A8 and W1, 71 and 73. Again, that Ryzen lead comes down to more core count than a raw generational advantage. Blender GPU wasn't compatible with the NAB9, same as the UN1290. Intel's integrated graphics just don't qualify as render devices here. The A8 and W1 both completed the test scoring 110 and 125 respectively. Procyon often shows off the bursty single core performance and puts the NAB9 back in the win column. It scored 6970, a 3.5% bump over the UN1290 and just a bit ahead of both the A8 and W1. For day-to-day -day productivity, it's quick, efficient, and very responsive. And finally, in 3D Mark Night Raid, the NAB9 landed at 19935, which is 9.3 increase over the UN1290. That's a nice jump, even though it's still behind the A8 and W1, both of which clear 28,000. So on average, the NAB9 Pro delivers a 2.7% improvement over the UN1290 across all tests. But what sets the NAB9 apart from every other mini PC in its price range is this, the ability to exponentially boost GPU performance thanks to its Oculink port. So with the help of an Oculink external GPU dock, conveniently also from Minus Forum, and honestly, it was just the most affordable one I found on Amazon, I gave the NAB9 Pro a serious GPU upgrade. Now, in my eGPU testing across multiple mini PCs, I found the sweet spot for performance tends to land in the mid-tier range. Think RTX 4070 or RX 7700 XT. Go higher than that and the four-lane PCIe connection starts to become a real bottleneck. Performance gains flatten out fast and you're basically wasting GPU horsepower and budget. For this setup, I'm using a Radeon RX 7700 XT on the Minus Forum dock and I'm happy to report that everything worked smoothly. I had full dedicated graphics running on the NAB9. Now let's see how adding the RX 7700 XT actually boost performance, especially in those GPU demanding workloads. Starting with the Geekbench 6 GPU test, the improvement is massive. The NAB9 Pro's integrated Iris XE GPU scored 15,293, but with the RX 7700 XT installed, that jumps to 118,337, a staggering 674% increase. That's well beyond the capabilities of any integrated GPU in the comparison, even outpacing the Mac Minis M4 at 57898 and nearly tripling the B-Link Seer 9. In Photoshop, the system moves from a solid 7034 up to 7658, a 9% gain. Now, Photoshop is still largely a single core CPU dependent application, so you won't see massive gains from a GPU alone, but many of the newer effects and filters like blur gallery, neural filters, and some transformations do take advantage of GPU acceleration, and that's where the RX 7700 XT gives the NAB9 Pro a noticeable edge in real-time responsiveness. 
Premiere Pro shows one of the most dramatic gains. The NAB9's original score of 2337 more than doubles with the RX 7700 XT climbing to 6606. That's a 183% increase increase this catapults it past all of the mini pcs on the chart and makes the nab9 legitimately capable for high efficiency video editing but then there's the blender gpu test this test wasn't even compatible with the nab9's integrated graphics but with the rx 7700 xt the system completes the run with a score of 670. it's not ultra high-end workstation territory but it's a night and day difference compared to being completely unsupported and finally in 3d mark night raid performance jumps from 1935 to 58,626, an almost 200% increase. That puts the NAB9 Pro well into gaming capable territory. So adding a mid-tier card like the RX 7700 XT through Oculink doesn't just improve the NAB9 Pro, it transforms it. You go from a compact productivity focused mini PC to a legitimate 3D rendering and content creation machine. Yes, you're still limited to the four PCIe lane, so higher end GPUs won't scale linearly, but if you stick to that RX 4070, RX 7700 XT range, you're getting serious desktop class GPU performance. But I know you guys, and I know what you really wanna see, especially once I slap in a desktop graphics card, and that's gaming performance. Well, let's start with how the NAB9 Pro handles gaming on the Intel integrated graphics. As we flip through these results, you'll notice it pulls slightly ahead of the UN1290 in most cases, but even at 1080p with low graphical presets, none of these games are truly playable on iGPU. The experience is choppy and consistent and just not enjoyable. However, once you pair that five gigahertz class CPU with a dedicated GPU, everything changes. Now we're looking at 1440p gaming on high to ultra settings with average frame rates approaching or blowing past 100 FPS, depending on the title. I was even able to play games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Stellar Blade, titles that aren't even remotely playable on the integrated graphics. The RX 7700 XT gave the NAB9 enough horsepower to comfortably run modern AAA games with smooth performance and high visual fidelity. Now, one thing Minisform and honestly, most mini PC manufacturers have been getting a lot better at lately is CPU power and thermal tuning. With the NAB9 Pro, Minis Form sets the PL1 right at the i9-12900HK's base level of 45 watts, but they've dialed the PL2 down from its max of 115 watts to just 65 watts, and that's actually a smart move. Basically lowering PL2 to 65 watts limits peak burst performance in synthetics tests, but it improves real world sustained performance by avoiding thermal saturation. You'll see higher scores in Cinebench with a 115 watt spike, sure, but for real world mixed or multi-core workloads, keeping the CPU cooler and more stable leads to higher average performance over time. And that's exactly what we saw here. The NAB9 Pro outperformed the UN1290 in real world tasks like Microsoft Office, Photoshop, Premiere, the gaming benchmarks, and falling slightly behind in Cinebench. During a Premiere Pro export, the NAB9 behaves just like you'd expect from a mobile Alder Lake CPU. It boosts hard and fast, hits its thermal limit quickly, and then settles into a sustained 45 watt package power at around 3.2 gigahertz with CPU temps holding in the mid 80s. This tuning allows individual cores to boost slightly lower, but for longer, resulting in higher average clock speeds across the workload. It's a more efficient balance of power, frequency, and temperature that delivers better performance overall. Outside of that initial all-core turbo spike at the start of a heavy task like video exports, the NAB9's effective core temps stay well below thermal throttling thresholds. But now the biggest complaint I have about the NAB9 is the fan tuning. The overall noise level is reasonable, maxing out at around 50 decibels, 
but the ramp up and ramp down behavior is very abrupt. And honestly, that's more annoying than just if it was loud. On top of that, the fan operates in the 1300 to 1700 hertz range, which is a higher pitched whine that's particularly irritating, especially when paired with the sharp sudden changes in fan speed. So, wrapping this one up, the NAB9 Pro, taken on its own, is a slightly better mini PC than the older UN1290. You get improved efficiency, a cleaner chassis design, and modest performance gain, especially in real-world productivity apps like Office, Photoshop, and Premiere Pro. However, it still trails behind comparably priced Ryzen 7000 and 8000 series mini PCs in multi-core and GPU accelerated tasks. And at this price point and form factor, nothing touches the Mac Mini M4 for creative or single core driven workloads. But here's the thing, very few mini PCs under $500 offer both Oculink ports and USB 4 paired with a CPU fast enough to actually make those expansion options worthwhile. That makes the NAB9 Pro kind of unique. You can start with it as an affordable and capable system for everyday productivity, media consumption, software development, light content creation, and all the other workloads that I and most other YouTubers don't really cover, like science and engineering, analytics, cybersecurity, audio production, or finance and trading. With 14 cores on tap, it also has plenty of headroom for virtualization and emulation, and if your needs grow, so can your setup. You can drop in a desktop GPU via Oculent to crank up 3D or compute performance, or take advantage of USB 4 for fast external storage, 10 gigabit networking, or a full docking station. Start small, expand later, that's the real value here. Of course, it's not all perfect. The UEFI isn't completely locked down, which is good, but Minus Forum still needs to unlock fan control options. The ramp behavior is abrupt and the pitch is high, which can be annoying in a quiet environment. This can be addressed with third-party software, but that's never as responsive as UEFI control. Still, for under $500, the NAB9 Pro delivers a surprisingly versatile platform, especially if you plan to grow into it. If you found this review helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you want to see more real world reviews and performance breakdowns like this, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.